Welcome to episode 10 of What Makes the Eastern Free State Lacquer. We are visiting the jewel of the Eastern Free State, Clarence and District. There are so many amazing places in this episode that it is slightly longer than usual and we subdivided the episode into three sections. In the first section we look at places where you can do things, then we show you where you can eat and then we show you where you can stay. It is truly a wow episode so be sure to watch until the end. This is our second Clarence episode. You can watch episode 5 to see the other fantastic Clarence places that we featured previously. What makes the Eastern Free State lacquer is an informal look at our majestic region. All of the places that we featured are listed on our website, where you will also find links to our previous episodes and other relevant videos. Or you can look on our YouTube channel and Facebook page. Please like, subscribe and share our various pages with your friends. Our first stop in this episode is the last farm before you enter Clarence from the Bethlehem side. And it is indeed a majestic piece of earth called Andes Clarence Guest Farm. Apart from being a game farm with spectacular hiking and trail running routes, you can have a delicious breakfast or lunch at Andes Cafe. In hulle koffie en koek is vir bylekker. Marius Nordea is die eienaar en sy dochter Brenda is in beheer van Andes Cafe. Now just when I thought I was already impressed by this farm and cafe, they showed us the accommodation. I was left speechless, really. It is incredible. This house has tranquil views and luxurious rooms and everything else that you would like to see in a luxury self-catering farmhouse. These rooms are attached to the cafe. Of course, this is a working farm with cattle, apples, and sheep, so you gotta drive carefully and give them right of way. I filmed the previous episode in autumn, but this time it is midsummer, so it is lush green when you drive past Titanic Rock. It almost feels like passing through a portal into another world when you drive into Clarence. A world where you can relax and recharge. The temperature is moderate and you breathe in fresh, clean mountain air. 
Clarence is situated at 1,800 meters above sea level and you quickly climb to over 2,000 meters when you hike or cycle into these mountains. My wife Renee and I went hiking with two locals, Madeleine Scholes and Lotter Vogel, who both put in a massive amount of volunteer time into the town and especially the conservancy. The Clarence Village Conservancy, or CVC, is a non-profit organization established in 2004 and managed by a committee of nine resident volunteers and four field rangers, all with a love for nature. Their primary function is conserving the beautiful mountain habitat, but they have also established a network of 12 walking or hiking trails, ranging from easy to challenging, with most trails also suitable for mountain biking. I enjoy hiking and have done a number of hikes in the Western Cape and Free State. These trails though must rank among the best maintained and most enjoyable trails to explore in our country. Clarence residents are encouraged to join as members of the CVC, but visitors can purchase day permits at a nominal fee at most of the stores and restaurants in town. Details are listed on their website. How tranquil and beautiful is this? There's a waterfall that's just started flowing now. It's the beginning of the wet season in the Eastern Free State. In front of me, I can see the Maluti Mountains, Clarence, the dam. The Clarence Park Run that takes place every Saturday morning benefits from these well-kept trails and is one of the most beautiful park runs in South Africa. The dam water is crisp and clean. We had a lacquer cool down swim before heading off to another adventure. This time with Ollie Esplin and the team at Clarence Extreme. They offer a number of adventure activities, all of them listed on their website. We start off with a group of ladies doing abseiling. I was fine at the bottom, but now it's a bit. <laughs> Ollie has a passion for adventure and started Clarence Extreme in 2005. His motto is Carpe Diem, which of course means seize the day. I love how he explained that it helps people to overcome their fears, especially fear of heights, which I'm still trying to overcome completely. And especially when you're in mountains and you're realizing you're at that point where you realize this here, no a bump. You know, there's, 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 that's, that's a decision you make. Most of the activities are at headquarters in Clarence, but there are some of the activities that take place at the Bistop, near the Golden Gate Highlands National Park. I have featured Golden Gate in a few previous episodes, so we are not spending time there today, but I want to mention the wonderful work again that park manager Paddy Gordon and his team are doing. I think Golden Gate is one of the natural wonders on planet Earth and highly recommend that you visit. Driving back towards Clarence, we visit the Clarence Golf Course. The course is in fantastic condition and enthusiasts from all over the Free State, Gauteng and KZN frequently play here. Op a vorige besoek aan Clarence het ek tot my ou rugby vriend Henry Hannibal of die Lem raak geloop, terwijl hy en een paar vriende golf gespeel het hier in Clarence. We make one more stop on a farm before we go into the town itself. St. Fort Farm is home to the Mushroom Rock and how incredibly dramatic were the clouds when we drove onto the farm. St. Fort is a meeting place where time stands still, the weary find rest and the adventurous play. 
St. Fort has been in the Goldblatt family since 1964. They are country folk at heart, and time is measured by the sun and the changing seasons, and things happen as they shoot on this farm, slow and steady. Here you can hike on various trails and even sleep in a cave if you want to. You can mountain bike, picnic, swim in the clear mountain streams and stay over in one of three options, namely the main house, the annex or the cottage. We were treated to some wonderful sunset drinks by the owners on top of a mountain with a 360 view of Surrender Hill, Lesotho and Clarence. I could even see Fasierskerf mountain in the distance. Clarence is indeed a one-stop destination for the whole family and for people who like a wide variety of activities. It is a peaceful, quiet retreat, yet if you are looking for live entertainment and a good care, you will find various options for that too. As a visitor, I think Clarence offers a good balance of both worlds, making for a very successful recipe. Clarence recently became the first smart town in South Africa, and here's the best thing about this lacquer town. There is no load shedding. Many of the restaurants have live music on occasion. This time around, we enjoyed live music at Clarence Backpackers and Food Stewards. Both places are owned by Rick Schwimmer. His son Rudo is one of my favorite musicians. I'm pretty sure that there's a shop for just about any type of person in Clarence. The variety is wonderful. The jacket shop is situated next to Clarence Extreme and is one of the town's iconic shops. All these jackets are previously owned and imported and you can purchase some truly fantastic bargains here. The owners Angela and Roger explained how much work it takes to sort out all of these jackets when they arrive at the shop. A new shop that recently opened is The Spence. Owned by world-class cyclist Carla Oberholzer and her husband Stefan, The Spence has such a wonderful flow and the beautiful shelves filled with all sorts of items make it really hard not to purchase baskets full of lacquer stuff. One of the well-established shops in Clarence is Purple Onion. I think I can René make a trend always to draw in this year's place when we are in Clarence Keir. Gerrit and Colleen are the passivvolle eigenaars. They have in 2002 been noted to work in a coffee winkel and have seen the need to work to sell confetti and so on to sell, which led to the creation of a country winkel, Purple Onion, in 2003 was caused. Dit was so successful that the deli aangehou uitbrei het en daar was gereeld aangebou. It was a wonderful surprise to bump into former international cricket umpire Barry Lamson here at Purple Onion. Barry of course became famous for his Lombarda style antics on the cricket pitch. My personal weakness in this place is the dark chocolate. In 2007, Gerrit and Colleen realized that there was a need for a quality contemporary art gallery. Inspired by the artist and poet Father Claro, they decided to call the gallery Blow Donkey. 
Both Purple Onion and Blow Donkey are showcases of the wonderful creativity of our South African people. I suppose it's unfair to mention names, but I immediately recognized two artists as I walked into the Blow Donkey. The first one is the famous Eastern Free State artist Johan Smit with his unique Eastern Free State style. And then Elga Rabi, whom we first met while filming my first feature film Faith Like Potatoes back in 2006. She lives just outside Greytown in KZN and is an incredible artist and amazing person. She was most probably the biggest inspiration to our daughter Marie, who has also become an artist specializing in fine art. In fact, Marie is also a resident of Clarence these days and she loves the creative vibe, the peaceful environment and the many outdoor adventure opportunities. She's also growing as a singer by the way, and again Clarence provides a great opportunity for this. To supplement her income, Marie works part-time at a new clothing store in town called Hashtag I Want. All these dresses are uniquely designed and handmade. Apart from Blow Donkey, there are three more beautiful art galleries in Clarence. Talking about creativity, the minister of the Clarence Dutch Reformed Church, Dominique Jan Venter, is a talented musician himself. Jan had a fantastic Kerfies concert geschreven that I can René onlangs bijgewoon het. I think I had all tranen in my oog gehad vroeg in the concert and recht dier was ek baie aangeraak dier hierdie fantastische concert. Al die musikante en sangers was plaaslike kunstenaar en dit was rechtig wauw gewees. Jan is also one of the main rugby coaches in the Gubetswana township, along with Italian restaurant owner Paolo. We featured Paolo's restaurant in episode 5. Now, let's show you some of the other incredible restaurants to choose from in Clarence. Clementine's is an absolutely must-visit beautiful restaurant with great atmosphere, delicious food and fantastic service. It used to be an old railroad bus service maintenance shed that was converted into a restaurant. After 16 years of Joburg corporate work, Shelley Horton opted for a better quality of life in Clarence and moved here in 2010. She bought Clementine's and together with her husband Mark they managed this very lack of place. Since meeting Shelley and Mark, we've been back here regularly and they're beginning to feel quite a lot like family, I must say. You can sit outside, inside or in the new upstairs wine room. They've recently added a stunning new speciality bar with a huge variety of whiskey, gin, vodka, brandy, red and white wine. The entire Clementine's team are strong supporters of the Clooney Animal Trust their adopted feline style Clementine is well loved by everyone. Off to another spectacular place. Street is a fully licensed a la carte restaurant and is situated barely 200 meters from the village square. Chef Francois's food is crafted from fresh seasonal local produce in an exclusive contemporary French country setting 
where menus change regularly to reflect the seasonal bounty available from local producers and suppliers. The owners Francois and Gerrit see it as their mission to support local produce. Even though I think the footage that I took here looks pretty good, I can promise you that it does not even come close to reflect the fantastic ambience of Treat. All I can say is treat yourself and visit this stylish, very lacquer place. I have come to really like craft beer and if there's one place in South Africa where you can pick and choose from a large variety of self-brewed beer, then it's Clarence Brewery. My two favorites here are the Blonde and the Vice. They offer tasting platters of their beer and of their gin and tonic. As good as always. And you can see they're in the back, nice and busy today on Boca Day. Again, thank you so much, Rasi, Donkey, Sia, and the whole team for giving us this public holiday. And we're enjoying it in Clarence. Owner and manager Lindsay is a trained chef as well. Hence the lack of food that is beautifully presented. All my friends also enjoy this brewery, making it an easy meeting place. My school friend Benny and his family met us here while we were filming. And to my surprise, we bumped into a school friend of my sister and her family, Penny Middlecoat, now Groenewald. I've not seen Penny since about 1990. Amazing how you keep on bumping into friends and people here in Clarence. Lindsay recently opened a gin bar as well in the same building as Clarence Brewery. It has a beautiful view of the mountain and of course excellent gin. The same owners of the Spence, Carla and Stefan, also own a well-established restaurant called Artist's Cafe. This family-friendly restaurant offers a wide variety of delicious food for everyone, including vegan dishes. Their staff always seem super friendly. By now I needed coffee and because I'm a coffee snob who refuses to drink instant coffee or even badly prepared brews by baristas who are not well enough trained, I go to Highland Coffee Roastery. I frequent this place and the owner Chris summarizes in one word when I ask him what is his secret to consistently good coffee. Um, passion. And um, what's the word I'm looking for? Care, taking, uh, you know, care in preparation. Yeah. You know what I like about that passion? It's, it's, it wasn't anything scientific. No, no, what, no passion yeah, is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Uh, yeah. It is a technical process, yeah. but there's a, yeah. as much creativity involved yeah. in it. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, can, I can taste the passion and the love. You see, there's a heart. Okay. <laughs> I can taste the passion and the love here. Yeah. Thanks, Clarence has an abundance of amazing accommodation options on offer. Gypsy life is a very unique, peacefully tranquil place where free-spirited travelers can stay. This place, owned by Shane and Sandy Miller, truly offers mystical magnificence. You have a variety of rooms to choose from, but my favorites are the meticulously designed and lovingly crafted authentic wooden gypsy wagons featuring hand-carved and hand-painted detailing.
Okay, now that I've used up all of my English vocabulary, let's have a look at the rest of the place. There are two fully functional gypsy vans to choose from. You can either sleep over here or take it on a romantic trip and sleep anywhere else. They also have rooms attached to the main house. If you're in need of a relaxing or sports massage, then you can book in with Shane. From one magical place to another, Situated in the mountains a few kilometers outside Clarence on the Golden Gate Road, you drive through this gate into a fairy tale world with two castles. Rapunzel's castle was inspired by the timeless fairy tale of the long haired princess. This tower offers an unforgettable escape into a storybook setting nestled amid the scenic beauty of the Eastern Free State. Aladdin's palace can be seen from a distance with the seven golden domes welcoming you to a wonderful stay. I don't think their carpets can actually fly, but I promise you if you visit here, you'll be entering a whole new world. The same two owners of the castles Marnie and Valdo created this place of peace in Clarence called Titanic View. The old sandstone manor house shares her majestic views over Titanic Rock and the surrounding mountains. The authentic Japanese garden provides total tranquility to every visitor. Situated on the green belt against the majestic mountains is Meander Stay. This quiet, beautiful place is owned by Madeleine and Johan Scholes, whom I mentioned when we went on the hike. They are vastly friends of ours and it's been wonderful to reconnect with them. They are a creative family and you can see it in the beauty of their rooms. Montcherie Clarence is a pet-friendly self-catering guesthouse with its superb location only 120 meters away from the local attractions, while still offering peace and intimate relaxation on private patios with stunning mountain views. The owner Marda spared no expense to make the stay luxurious and comfortable, whether it's winter or summer. I was so impressed with the finishing touches of this place. The Protea Hotel Clarence offers a luxurious four-star retreat and it exudes sheer style, luxury and design that blends in with the natural splendor of Clarence, the inspiration of artists, eco lovers and tourists who simply enjoy exploring the tranquil magical landscape. The hotel takes special pride in its warm hospitality with 70 luxurious rooms and high-end meeting room facilities that can seat up to 100 delegates. So whether you are planning a romantic getaway, a team building exercise, a business conference or an African safari prepare for an experience of a lifetime. Hot day of filming 
in Clarence, and all the beautiful places. Kijk hoe lekker is het. Remember I mentioned my best friend from school in Vasti, Benny van Dijk. They decided to spend their Christmas holiday in Clarence instead of at the coast like they usually do. Benny, his wife Karika and their two daughters Benika and Ziske stayed on a guest farm 7 kilometers outside Clarence towards Ferriesburg called Ridge Road Estate. There are two luxury self-catering homes to choose from. They stayed in the windmill cottage that can sleep six people and I just love this dam and windmill right next to the cottage. The country house can sleep 12 people. The owner of Reach Road, Lynn Hoyle, is an artist and co-owns the art gallery Addie Hoyle. She also owns this romantic self-catering unit above the art gallery called La Poste. The owners of Treat Restaurant also own wonderful self-catering accommodation situated right next to the restaurant called Clarence Retreat. I mentioned the Clarence Backpackers earlier when we showed the Jamboree Music Festival. I've never been a backpacker sort of person, but Rick Schwimm's place is so much more than a normal backpacker's. They have a variety of rooms to choose from for young and old, like this one called the Beehive. From the air, Clarence backpackers looks a bit like a village of their own. This large quad has bright facilities and my favorite part of this place is the permanent stage where they host regular shows and music festivals. Schwimms have owned Schwimm tires in Bethlehem since 1928 and Rudo Schwimm is the current manager. They offer competitive prices and great service. Amalia is a beautiful self-catering house situated in a secure complex at the foothills of the mountain. Hier in die winter in Naweek, hier spandeer saam met ons goeie vriende Franco en Tania Smit. Franco is natuurlijk volgens my een van die beste rugby africhters in die wereld, so sy weer eens die laaste paar jaar gewys het met sy span in Skotland, die Glasgow Warriors. All our bags are packed and we're ready to go, but we have one more stop before we head back to Senekal. Ons reis so 10 km op een grondpad voordat ons indraai by die plaas Stay Significant. Ons het in die laaste jaar goeie vriende geraak met een fantastische sangeres, Kate Rock. Wanneer sy nie op die verhoog is nie, is haar naam Suzanne Stein. Haar familie besit hier die prachtige plaas. Stay Significant is a company that aims to give a unique contemporary lifestyle farm experience. The Steins' beloved family farm, Madeira, long known by their family and friends for her isolation, splendor and unmatched experiences, is finally open to the public. Guests can roam freely with their pets, ascend the highest regional peak to be found on the private property in the Eastern Free State. Madeira is off the grid. Stay Significant aims to keep the land and the experience as natural as possible and leave the smallest human footprint possible. Accommodation includes a quaint cottage that sleeps up to six, a bush camp that is only accessible by four by fours, and a shed for larger groups. Ons het lekker miliebrood geëet wat Suzanne self gebak het, en al te vinnig moes ons begin huiswaarts keer. We live in Sienekal, only an hour's drive from Clarence, but every single time that I visit this wonderful town and region, I feel revived and refreshed. I really love Clarence. I really love the Eastern Free State. And I love my country. Where the ewige geberg is, where the kranse antwoord gee, sounds the call to come together and united, we shall stand. Let us live and strive for freedom in South Africa, our land.